Welcome to our first ever episode of The Show With No Name with myself, Mackenzie Thurkill, and I'll be hosting it. Now again, this is a working show title, so don't judge us. We're taking, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Request. Request. Suggestions. 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 See? First episode. Working out all the kinks right now. <laughs> but I am joined by two people that you may be very familiar with, Tom Traxler and Jeff Radcliffe. Hello. Thanks for giving me the memo of wearing plaid, you guys. Whoops. Yeah, about Pre that. I appreciate that. <laughs> but the blind CC did not work. <laughs> <laughs> but let's kind of first introduce you guys. People always hear you. I mean, you are kind of somewhat the voices of Orlando City. So just kind of tell yeah. me how you guys got involved with the club to begin with. Well, uh, for me, I think I, I met Jeff. Jeff was already doing the gig, and uh, I got I brought in mid-year i think that was 2012 yeah 2012 yeah. not even mid probably early early mid um i got i got asked to come in um by a, a gentleman who was producing the uh, it was a youtube broadcast at the time and uh, i said what do you want me to do he says just just go in and and, and sit down with jeff and talk about the game I was like, who is this guy <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean i knew you i think i knew you from winter park that was it i was covering uh, sports for bright house sports network and we had a contract for three usl games in 2011 to 2012. i got to call those with eddie rodriguez who's a former mls player and then the club you know and, and phil said hey would you mind doing maybe a couple more you know for for youtube and just to have our usl broadcast and sure and by by the end of 2011 i've done pretty much every game so and then, then it got a lot better once Tom joined the full, because it was a rotating cast of people coming in before you. Yeah, sometimes in the middle of a game, I came in and we <laughs> sat down, and uh, we Jeff and I kind of hit it off uh, yeah. from the outset, and it just felt good. It felt right. We were, you know, both similar age. We have similar tastes in, in music and in movies, and so we have a lot in common, and um, we had a lot of fun doing it. So yeah, some people watching may not get the jokes, but we always do. It's true. Now, what's the one thing that the three of us have in common? We're all on the TV broadcasts, and we all love all right. Orlando City and the Pride and OCB. There you go. So let's get into broadcast. It seems that soccer, specifically MLS, has just really taken off the last mm -hmm. year or two. I mean, especially for us, like with Orlando City. I mean, our productions consistently are beating MLB on primetime and NBA, which is amazing yeah. to think about. Why do you think it's so successful right now? Why do you think it keeps growing? It's come a long way. I mean, going back to 1996, how many MLS games did you watch? You know, you, you'd watch the games in England and Germany and, and what have you. But that's just the, the, the way it is in this country now. It's so accessible. And I think where MLS is going to continue to try to go, and it's getting there, where, whereas Orlando City games are very popular in Orlando. Portland games are very popular in Portland. But trying to get the, the fans that are watching the playoff game, uh, as we taped this last night, the Montreal-Toronto playoff game, which was amazing, uh, as there was eight goals scored. Uh, that's where it's going, and now we're getting more, we're seeing evidence of more and more of that, of just the casual fan checking in on MLS, and that's what had been missing the last, you know, first two decades of the league. Would you agree? Uh, I, absolutely. I can remember being around in 1996, and, and I would have to go to a stadium. I was living in, in Tampa at the time, and the Tampa Bay Mutiny had launched, so I remember going to the stadium to watch a mutiny game, but it was more difficult to watch uh, the games on TV. And now there's so much more outlet to watch the games on television. I mean, if you look, and, and, and I think the quality of the broadcasts have Absolutely. gotten infinitely better. Going back to last night, for example, that Toronto Montreal series, they broke records, whether it was in Canada or even just national broadcasts in the United States. So kind of now sidetracking and using that information, no, no talking about Canada, yeah. One of those teams is in the MLS Cup now, Toronto. Well, it's been a long time coming for Toronto. A lot of money spent, but they finally made it, right? Yeah, I mean, it's got to be very, very exciting for them. I mean, you look at the money that they put in on the mm -hmm. playing side, bringing in uh, players like uh, Sebastian Jovinko, a phenomenal player, and look at the age that he came in to this league, it, unusual. Um, you've got Josie Altidore, Michael Bradley. Um, you look at the money they've put in into their facility, this, this, and they've, they've really retrofitted the stadium and made it brand new. Um, their training facility is, is marvelous. So um, a lot of preparation for this moment of success. It's been many, many years coming for Toronto, and, and I think it's gonna be a very exciting game yeah. in, in Toronto against Seattle. Yeah, it's definitely a Cinderella story for both teams. Both, time, both teams making their first appearance in the mm -hmm. MLS Cup. First time Toronto gets to host the MLS Cup. Two former expansion teams yeah. playing in the MLS Cup. Exactly. Which is, that's 
good news going down in the future for us. Mm -hmm. So uh, we like to see that. Now, I don't know who to root for now, though. Yeah, that's that was my next question. Who do you think will win, but who do you want to win? I, I boys, it, it'd be hard to go against Toronto in Toronto, um, especially if if Altidore's playing well mm -hmm. and Javinko's playing well and yeah, Bradley's playing five well. Five goals in five straight games. I mean, the three of them are, are really key to Toronto. If, if they're going to be successful, those three have to be playing well. Jeff and I have, have seen Toronto play many times. Mm -hmm. In fact, we've seen them play without those three players. And it's not the same team. They become an average side, really, all in all. Those three players make a big difference for them. Well, I'm happy either way, but I, you know, we got to be an Eastern Conference fan here, so I'm yeah, going for Toronto. Yeah, I want the trophy to come back to the East Coast. Yeah, exactly. West Coast doesn't need two in a row. <laughs> come on now. Yeah. Now, when we talk about clubs, of course, like one of the big slogans for MLS is for club and country. So obviously there's been some big news for the national team. Jurgen Klinsmann out, Bruce Serena back in 10 years later. Thoughts, you guys? I think a welcome change. And I was on the Klinsmann bandwagon five years ago. I was all for this because this promise of a really uh, attacking style, a very thoughtful, uh, flowing style of soccer that we never saw. But when you have these results, losing to Jamaica, uh, in the Gold Cup on, on home soil, losing some games to, at, at Guatemala. Those are games we never lost before. Mm -hmm. And I think it, when you start out qualifying, albeit with two of your three hardest games in the hex, uh, playing that way and getting thumped in, in Costa Rica, I think it, it was time. And I, I applaud Sunil Galati for finally coming to his senses and, and, and moving on. Um, I was excited initially with Jurgen Klinsmann coming on, remembering him as a player. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. A phenomenal player, phenomenal striker. Um, but I, I think this change has been um, a long time waiting. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I think it's several years past due myself. Um, my knock has always been, I'm not sure that Jurgen Klinsmann ever really knew who his best 11 were. Yeah. I, I, I don't think so. I, I think the, the changes in lineup quite constantly and the players in and out. He never settled on any one lineup or any group of 11 players to represent our country. Um, and, and lastly, no, was I concerned about losing to Costa Rica? When have we ever done well in We've never won, but you don't We've lose. We've never won there. Yeah, so but we also lose. lost the Dos Acero. But it was, but it was the but manner. of Columbus. It was the manner. <laughs> right. It was the manner in which that defeat They quit. Came. And mm -hmm. then the other thing that bothered me, and if you think about this really, um, every team has their friendlies in preparation to play someone. So going into the Mexico game at home, their preparation game was against Cuba. Cuba. How does Cuba represent or replicate Mexico in, in, in any way, shape, or form? <laughs> they don't. No. And they played it down in Cuba on a really poor pitch. And the thing that really also bothered me was he wanted to play a back three against Mexico, but he played a back four against Cuba. So mm -hmm. in preparation, he plays a back four, yeah. goes into the Mexico game, plays a back three. That goes horribly wrong. And he has to make a, a change 20 minutes in. And that was change was initiated by players like Michael Bradley on the field yeah. and Jermaine Jones. So tactically, I just don't think he was, he was quite there. Now, does he know the game as a player? Sometimes the great players don't make necessarily great coaches, great managers. And I think that might have been the case. I certainly wish Jurgen the, be uh, the best. There's some good things that he did, but uh, it's, it's certainly time to move on. Let's now shift the focus to what everyone really wants to talk about, and that's our club. So let's start with OCB. Okay. Shall we? Started so one, it was just up. announced that they will be playing here in Orlando, which is so exciting, I think, for everyone. Mm -hmm. And also we have three new signings that were just announced. Yeah, I, mean, I think coming back here is, is the wise move. Uh, and we love Melbourne, and we've got a great fan base out there. The Harbor City Hooligans were great. But I mm -hmm. think in order to, to bring people, uh, have a, a bigger following, I think it's good. And it, it's the, the travel, that you have the hour, 15 minutes, not just for the fans, but for the club yeah. to have to go out there. I think this is a good, and it's an opportunity to come in and see the stadium. I know we're going to get into that in just a bit, but uh, that you may not have if you're not getting into the first team games and you're going to see some of these, uh, the future guys, and then these, these, these new uh, signings that we've had. Uh, it, it's an opportunity to see just the, not just the future, but also the present. Mm -hmm. oh, I'd agree. Harbor City, Harbor City Hooligans, they, were were, were, they are great. And they'll, and, and you know, I they'll hope be here. They'll be here. Yeah, yeah, I hope they come here, and I think they will come here and be a part of what's going to happen in this brand-new, beautiful stadium. But not only, you know, you're going to have the, the Iron Lion firm will be there, the Ruckus will be there, you know, the, the really wonderful fan support and, and the supporters that we have here will be showing up to those games. And it's a chance to see it in this beautiful new stadium. The players will be excited. I, I, that will make a difference wait. on the field, too. Oh, I, I mean, look yeah. at Cincinnati this year in USL getting number 20,000 a game we had that kind of uh, experience in our USL days that we get back to that I think 
you're not talking about fighting for a playoff spot. You're fighting to win the East now if you get that, that, that the fan support behind you. Yeah, and I think you actually spoke to Coach Ant about some of the new guys that came in. So I did. three new guys. We have two from USL and one from NASL. Indeed, uh, and, and they're, they're all three um, really excited, important pieces. And, and Anthony, uh, I talked with Coach Pulis, and, and he had a lot. Uh, it was a short conversation, but he mm-hmm. did tell me quite a little bit. Um, you know, we talk about Timbo. He's a, he's a 6'3 center back who's naturally left-sided, and he really wanted someone who was left-sided to, to give balance at the back. It's, it's nice when you're left-sided. To bring center. balance to well, the no, force. Well, no, <laughs> yes, you have to bring balance to the force, Jeff. <laughs> But to, it's nice when your, your left side center back can, can play with mm-hmm. his left. Yeah. It's important. Um, and he's also, as, as Anthony told me, he's going to be one of the very few older type players that we have. So he will be seen as, as yeah, a I leader. Think he's actually older than I am. I think he was born in the 1990, and I'm 91. So well, there, you, there go. you go. He's, he's older. So, but, <laughs> but that experience, he's got experience, and, and yeah, he can be a, a, another leader inside that dressing room. Mm-hmm. Um, and next to him, you can put Zach Carroll, who was – ever so impressive this year for New York Red Bulls, too. The champs, by the yeah, way. The yeah, the champions. So he's got a championship pedigree now. Yeah. And Anthony was shocked that he was actually available. He, he never thought that he was going to have a chance to get Zach. So when mm-hmm. they had a chance to, to get him, they jumped on it immediately. Uh, they think this is a player that really could make that transition into MLS. Um, and then Scott Thompson, they see as a, a natural replacement for Mikey Ambrose. Okay. Uh, he, he's a good player who can get up and down the line. He was actually a part of, of the Red Bulls organization, but because they're so deep and so talented, he ended up in the Richmond Kickers organization, but Im- impressed the coaching staff every time they played. Well, we all know from our USL days, the quality of Lee Kalashaw's bunch in Richmond, too. Mm-hmm. So that's a, a, good, a good place to play. They're a playoff team every year. So they've added three really good pieces this week. It's crazy to see with the USL how much talent they're producing nowadays, and it keeps growing. We now are welcoming the Rowdies into mm. USL. I know your favorite topic. Oh, no, 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 your no, no. Topic. no, no, no. <laughs> I, I mean, well, what I what I do, you know, what I do like, I love rivalries. Mm-hmm. I do. I, I think rivalries make anything better. I would because agree with that. It's, it's the first thing. I, I guarantee you, when that schedule comes out, the first thing our supporters are going to do for USL is look at that list When's and go, the where's the yeah. Rowdies game? Now let's move to our other team, the Orlando Pride, the NWSL team that we have. They're going into their second season mm-hmm. next year. What's something that excites you about that? For, for me, um, it's a chance to watch this team get better. Mm-hmm. I, I think they made really good strides this year coming in as a, as a first-year team. You, you look at them over the, the first part of the season, Jeff, and, and I think they were a very exciting, very competitive team to watch. So um, with the addition of, of some new players, which will certainly come on, and I, and I can't wait to, to watch them start to add players and, and mm-hmm. see what players come in. Um, I, I think they're going to be a very exciting team to watch this year. And I look at players like Ashlyn Harris, who's now getting even more of a shot with the U.S. national team. Kristen Edmonds, who, got who, who, who Tom yes. Sermani said was her, the MVP of the team this yeah. year, led the team in goals. It was very exciting. And because of her play with the Bride, got a look with the U.S. national team. So that's what we want to see is, is getting these players put on the right stage. So, yeah. uh, But the fact that they're going to be playing in the new stadium, mm-hmm. which is going to be a, a more impressive environment, it's going to be closer to what the Portland Thorns have. It's a little more intimate. Uh, I think that's going to make the experience even better. I'm looking forward to all the teams playing on a natural grass surface. Oh, and I think aren't all, we all? I think all the players are looking forward <laughs> yeah. to playing on a natural grass surface. And here's the other thing. Uh, early in the season, it's going to be tough to get a ticket for, for the first team uh, MLS club. This may be your chance to get into that stadium if you are unable to, to, to secure tickets. Uh, so OCB and Pride, a perfect opportunity to fill that up and make that venue good for all three of the teams. I mean, truly with those three clubs. You spend half the week it, it is yeah. going to be our home. It is going to be our home. It's, it's, it's the club's home, and it's our home because we're there all the time. So it's going to be great. Yeah, now let's switch gears. First team. Obviously, now looking ahead to the future, our third season in the league. But before that, we have the expansion draft coming up in just a mere week and a half. So let's kind of talk about that a little bit, how that works. Cause I, whether they, everyone at home knows or not how it works, let's kind of get in that, especially because the rules just changed sure, they for did. this year. Yeah, so. we, we selected, uh, Orlando City selected 10 players a few years back, whereas Atlanta and Minnesota are both going to have five mm-hmm. to be able to, because 
look at how many how many of them actually stay with the club. A lot of them get dealt in trades and for. So to actually have a very concise number to help improve your club, uh, only the best of the best are going to be taken. So uh, and and the other rule is only one player per team. Once a te one player is taken from your team, you're out of out of contention. So I think that's very important. I too. think you're right. I was talking to someone yesterday, and, and I was mentioning that you know when Orlando City did this, the players were coming in and going out. Mm -hmm. you know, we they, didn't even they, see some Mark Sherrod. We never ex saw him exactly. Yeah. So we we didn't even see those players. So for them to make this decision, them being MLS. I think is a is a really good decision. I, I think it gives you, it gives these expansion clubs more quality and more depth inside those five players that they're going to be able to pick from, and, and it also gives the the current clubs a little bit more protection because, like Jeff said, once once if if a player and there's no guarantee that a player gets picked, because yeah, you think only ten ten only ten teams are going to lose half the league the current league is going to lose a player just exactly half. Mm -hmm. exactly so no guarantee yeah. that your club is going to lose one of their unprotected players. Um, but should should that happen, you immediately come off the board. So I, I kind of like that. Yeah. And then in January, we have the Super Draft. And we've been very, very and successful we have. We have getting players out of that. Kyle so. Laren, Haji Berry. Haji Berry. Um, you, you look at the, the players that we've gotten. Kyle Laren, I mean, look at his first year in this yeah. league. I mean, rookie of the year. I mean, it was I, – I felt bad for – for, for Haji and, and Lorea coming in behind yeah. him, I was like, man, big shoes to fill. <laughs> right? no, no pressure. pressure. Yeah, no I think pressure we'll, we'll see Lorea factor in a little bit, too, because you could see some of the magic he had in his boots last year with OCB. So I uh, needed a little bit of growing up, and now he's gotten that, so I think you'll see him factor in. And uh, we were a non-playoff team, so we'll pick a little higher than most. Mm -hmm. So I, I think no matter what, uh, even before any wheeling and dealing happens, I think you'll see another good player join the fray. Now let's end it with the one thing you're most excited for for next season. And it could be for anything. Well, I mean, mm. the stadium, uh, to me, that's an easy question. Yeah. yeah. Or an easy answer, rather. But I, th I think all of our first answer else? is going to be stadium. just being able to walk into what will be the club's home. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a long time coming. All of the supporters and, and all of the staff and all the, you know, the folks that have been around uh, since 2011 and they've watched the evolution of this club and even fans that have come on you know, since the MLS days, I think everybody's been really looking forward to that moment in March where you're going to be able to walk into this new home and, and uh, see the game in, in an environment that it was built to be seen in. Uh, you're going to be closer to the game than ever before. Uh, the, the amenities that the fans are going to have, the, the creature comforts, if you will, are, are going to be uh, second to none and unlike what they've experienced before. Uh, I know that I, I can't wait to hear the, the, the wall, the iron line oh, firm and the so ruckus, loud. because it is going to be the loudest, most ferocious, most intimidating environment in MLS, I, I guarantee it. I think it's going to be an emotional day like we had at the beginning of, of, of the 2015 season, when the first uh, game against NYCFC. But if you just remember, we got uh, this chance in Major League Soccer because we had a plan for a stadium. So this was what really pushed the whole effort. Uh, and going back to, I remember the first press conference with, with Phil Rollins and him, our, our, our goal was to get into Major League Soccer in three to five years. And everybody, I was in the media at the time, I was like, that would be great, but come on, really? Mm -hmm. And here it is, that will be the moment where uh, next to the, that first MLS game, this will be the next one where we're coming out in purple in that first game at that stadium is going to be, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have, have it's going to be tough for me not to tear up. I think it will be a way to put it. I think it's going to be tough for all of us. Because we've been around it up. so long. But, yeah, yeah and, and the club's done it right. So mm -hmm. I just cannot wait to see all of what they've been dreaming of mm. for, for many, many years. It's coming to life. You can, you can go there now, drive by it, oh, take man. a look at it. But uh, just walking in on that first day, um, I'm, I'm, I just, I'm so excited. I, I can't wait for it. So thank you guys for joining us today. Thank You're you, McKinney. Thank you. And thank you for all watching. Also, thanks to WFTV for letting us borrow their studio. Now, like we said, this is a pilot episode, so we're taking recommendations whether you think we should actually have a show title outside of a show with no name or things you liked, things you didn't like. Let us know in the comments, and we will definitely take it into consideration because this is all for you, the fans watching. So we will see you next time. Okay, that was take one. <laughs> Let's do it again.